Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to do my review of WrestleMania 3. Starting off the evening, we'll go to our first match of the night. It is Rick Markell and Tom Zink versus Bob Orton and Don Morocco. The match itself, I thought it was a really good matchup. Back and forth matchup between both teams with Don Morocco keeping the pace for his team. But Rick Martell ultimately hits a crossbody on Don Morocco, pinning him for the three. And your winners of the match are Rick Martell and Tom Zink. Hats off to Martell and Tom Zink for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night as well. It is Hercules versus Billy Jack Haynes. I thought this was a decent matchup. Back and forth matchup between both Hercules and Billy Jack Haynes with Hercules keeping the pace of the match. But the match ultimately ends in a double count out. The only thing I'll say about this match, man, to me, is I wish this match was a clean finish, man, because this would have been one crazy match. But again, we ended up getting a double count out. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Hillbilly Jim, Hayden Kid, Little Beaver versus King Kong, Little Tokyo, and Lord Littlebrook. I thought it was an okay matchup, back and forth matchup between both teams with King Kong Bunny keeping the pace of the match. But Hillbilly Jim, uh, Hayden Kid, Little Beaver end up getting the win in this matchup. matchup. Um, hats off to them for getting the win in this match. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Junkyard Dog versus Harley Race. Um, I thought this was a good matchup. Back and forth matchup between both Junkyard Dog and Harley Race with JYD keeping the pace of the match. But Harley ends up hitting a devastating belly to belly suplex on Junkyard Dog, pinning him for the three, and your winner of the match is Harley Race. Again, hats off to Harley Race for getting the win in that matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is the Roju Brothers versus Greg the Hammer Valentine and Brutus the Barber. I thought it was a good matchup, back and forth matchup between both teams with the Roju Brothers keeping the pace of the match. But Dino Bravo gets involved in the match, ends up attacking Ray Rujo with the referee being distracted. Greg the Hammer Valentine then goes for the cover, pins for the three, and your winners of the match are Greg the Hammer Valentine and Brutus the Barber. Again, this was a great matchup, man. I thought it was a really good matchup. I kind of wish it was a clean finish that Dino Bravo didn't get involved in this matchup, but, you know, the other thing too, the Roju Brothers, man, a lot of people probably didn't like the Roju Brothers. I thought they were an underrated tag team, in my honest opinion. Ray and Jacques Rougeau was a great tag team. They really were, and to be honest with you, I mean, obviously, Jacques Rougeau had a more long-lasting career in professional wrestling than Ray did. Ray kind of went off and did commentary and stuff like that, but, uh... The Rozier brothers, to me, were underrated. The amount of, you know, the tag matches they had, you know, with the Hart Foundation, you know, Demolition, so on and so forth, you got to, you know, give them credit where credit's due, man. They were definitely one of those underrated tag teams that, to me, honestly didn't get a fair shake in professional wrestling, in my honest opinion. But uh, hats off to Greg Valentine and Brutus Barber for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Roddy Piper versus Adrian Adonis in a hair versus hair match. Um, this was a good matchup, back and forth matchup between both Piper and Adonis, with Piper keeping the pace of the match. But Piper ultimately applies his signature sleeper hold on Adrian Adonis, and your winner of the match is Roddy Piper. A couple things I'll say about this match, man. Number one, the way they were building this matchup, this was supposed to be Piper's last match. This was his retirement match. Um, which obviously he didn't fully all retire after this match. And this was the match to me, I maybe stated this like maybe last week or something like that, a couple days ago. Um, this was the match where Adrian Adonis got his hair cut and just completely freaked out and just went off and he was going after, you know, Roddy Piper and Brutus Barber was ringside, you know, coming into the ring and cutting the hair of Adrian Adonis and he just completely flipped out. It was absolutely hilarious. Um, but again, hats off to Roddy Piper for getting a win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we're going to our next match of the evening. It is Danny Davis and the Hart Foundation versus Tito Santana and the British Bulldogs. I thought this was a good matchup. It was a back and forth matchup between both teams with the Hart Foundation keeping the pace of the match. But Danny Davis ends up hitting Davy Boy Smith with a megaphone. Pinning him for the three, and your winners of the match are Danny Davis and the Hart Foundation. Again, hats off to Danny Davis and the Hart Foundation for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Butch Reed versus Coco Beware. 
I thought it was a good matchup, back and forth matchup between both Reed and Coco Beware, with Coco keeping the pace of the match. Coco Beware hits a crossbody on Reed, but Reed ends up turning it into a roll up on Coco Beware, pinning him for the three, and your winner of the match is Butch Reed. Again, hats off to Butch Reed for getting the win in that matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night as well. And to me, honestly, I'm not trying to be biased here, but to me, this was the main event of WrestleMania 3. It is Randy Savage defending his Intercontinental Championship against Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Like I said, man, I thought this was a great matchup, back and forth matchup between both Randy and Ricky Steamboat, with Ricky keeping the pace of the match. Ricky ends up hitting a roll up, though, on Randy Savage, pinning him for the three, and your winner of the match at that time, new Intercontinental Champion, is Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. A couple of things I'm going to say about this match. You know, number one, like I just said earlier, this should have been the main event of WrestleMania 3, hands down. Not, not taking anything away from Hogan and Andre. This match, to me, is one of the greatest matches I've ever seen. I mean, both, you know, the storyline itself, Ricky coming back from injury, you know, that he sustained from Randy Savage, and his coming back, you know, obviously coming down to the ring with George the Animal Steel, um, and Randy Savage, you know, I mean, people can say what they, you know, what they want about Randy Savage, but there will never be another ran uh, wrestler like Randy Savage, ever, ever, hands down. And, you know, just how, you know, and there's been so many documentaries that have come out about this match and how Randy really wanted to pinpoint every single thing about this match from top to bottom. And, I mean, they just put on one crazy performance for the fans at WrestleMania 3. And in my honest opinion, like I said, and I'm going to say it one more time, this should have been the main event of WrestleMania 3. But hats off to Ricky the Dragon Steamboat for getting the win in that matchup and at that time becoming the new Intercontinental Champion. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Jake Roberts versus Honky Tonk. I thought it was a good matchup, back and forth matchup between both Roberts and Honky Tonk with Jake the Snake Roberts keeping the pace of the match. But Honky Tonk ends up hitting a roll up, pins with a three, and your winner of the match is Honky Tonk. Hats off to Honky Tonk for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is the Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov versus the Killer Bees. Um, it was a good matchup, back and forth matchup between both teams with Iron Sheik and Nikolai keeping the pace of the match. And then Iron Sheik and Nikolai end up securing the win. So hats off to Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov for getting a win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into the main event of WrestleMania 3. It is Hulk Hogan defending the WWE Championship against Andre the Giant. The match itself, good matchup. Legendary matchup, back and forth matchup between both Hogan and Andre, with the Giant keeping the pace of the match. Hogan ends up hitting a pretty big scoop slam on Andre the Giant, the crowd completely erupted after that. And then Hogan ends up hitting his signature leg drop on Andre, pinning him for the three, and your winner of the match is Hulk Hogan. Couple of things I'm going to say about this match. Number one, the storyline between Hogan and Andre is, was huge. Man, it's synonymous with professional wrestling. You know, Hogan used to say when he wrestled Andre in the past that he would most pretty much get sick before he would wrestle Andre because of how scared he was to wrestle Andre the Giant. Can't say that I blame him. The other thing I will say is, you know, Andre. You know, for Andre to put over Hulk Hogan and have him get the win because. You know, just like in the, the Randy Savage Steamboat match, a lot of documentaries obviously have come out about this Hogan Andre match that happened in WrestleMania 3. And nobody knew the finish even leading up to this match. And for Andre to put over Hogan in this match was absolutely huge and a big, you know, showing of Andre's character in professional wrestling. He knew, in my honest opinion as a fan, he knew that, you know, the ship was starting to sail with Hogan. And Hogan was steering the ship. I mean, Hogan was the flagship. You know the flag bearer if you will for wwe at that time i mean hogan was the man he was on top of this game everybody loved andre you know andre was that heel or he was a baby face but people he was, he was an attraction you know people wanted to come to professional wrestling or wwe to see you know the giant andre the giant you know what i mean and vince mcmahon would say the same thing you know andre was a wrestler but he was also an attraction for the fans to come in and watch professional wrestling and i think it was a big side you know a big sign of andre's character 
to put over Hogan. I, I really do. And for Hogan, this match alone had made Hogan's career. I mean, for him to get the win over Andre the way he did with the scoop slam, you know, hitting the leg drop, pinning Andre for the three, this match, no matter what Hogan does or Hogan did in his career after that point, this that match made his career synonymous forever. I mean, he's the guy who beat Andre. He's the guy that picked up Andre off his feet and slammed him onto the mat and pinned him for the one, two, three. You know, that's why WrestleMania is the show of the morals because ever since that that match, that finish, I mean, Hogan has been, you know, on top of the world, you know, of professional wrestling, you know, for years and years later after that match with him and Andre. So, again, you know, hats off to Hogan for getting the win in that matchup and retaining the WWE Championship. But as far as my rating goes for WrestleMania 3, you guys know by now that I always give these pay-per-views a rating from 1 out of 10. To me, WrestleMania 3, you know, there's a lot of really good WrestleManias. I mean, one of my favorites is WrestleMania 10, hands down. WrestleMania 3, to me, you know, was a very good WrestleMania. I'm not going to sit here and say it was the greatest of all time. But... For the matches that I enjoyed on here, obviously Hogan, Andre, and to me, what should have been the main event, Randy Savage versus Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Those two matches alone is why I'm giving this WrestleMania probably an eight, to be honest with you. I mean, those two matches alone were, you know, just amazing. And, and Randy Savage and Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, you know, some people are calling it the greatest match of all time. And honestly, I'm not going to sit here and disagree with them. And there's a lot of good matches. Look, man, Shawn Michaels versus Undertaker at WrestleMania, years down the line, phenomenal matchup. Phenomenal matchup, phenomenal storytelling. But before we got that match, it was Randy Savage versus Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, hands down. One of the greatest matches I've ever seen. And not only that, kudos to Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, man, because Ricky the Dragon Steamboat has had some phenomenal matches in his career. Besides the match he had with Randy Savage, the matches he had with Ric Flair, like the Shy Town, uh, was it Shy Town Rumble? Phenomenal matchup. The 60 minute Iron Man match they had? Phenomenal matchup. And Ricky the Dragon Steamboat has been in a lot of synonymous matches in professional wrestling. So, you know, my hats go off to Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. But as far as my rating for WrestleMania 3, I'm going to have to give it a, you know, a strong 8, man. I'm not going to say it was the best WrestleMania, but it definitely, definitely was not the worst. But this is my review of WrestleMania 3. I hope you guys are out there staying safe. Be careful and remember, stay classy. Peace.